So today I'm going to preach the sermon entitled Do Not Forget This One Fact That One Day Is As A Thousand Years And A Thousand Years Are Like A Day Some people in this world say that a human life is vain and human life is futility. Time just flows and passes by. And as we cannot make it flow faster or slower, we should just enjoy the time given to us and do whatever we want to do in our life. You may have encountered friends or people who say this, right? However, Apostle Peter, through today's main scripture, proclaimed that we must not forget one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And through this scripture, he also questioned us regarding to the existence of ourselves, existence of oneself. Why do I exist? And about the purpose of oneself. Why do I, what do I live for? And about the necessity of oneself, am I needed in God's kingdom? And the value of oneself, how worthy am I in the eyes of God? So today let's share the grace of God by looking at what it means by saying one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. Big number one today is God is eternal. This scripture, Apostle Peter and this scripture tells us that God is eternal and God is the owner of the time. God is the owner of time. This scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 9, teaches us that God is eternal. God doesn't have a day or a year. God is not restricted or limited by time or space. One day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So for God, one day could have become a thousand years, right? And a thousand years could have become a day. So God is not restricted or limited by time or space. And this scripture is actually quoted from Psalm 90 verse 4. Psalm 90 verse 4. So let me read it, read it for you. Psalm 90 verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight are like yesterday when it passes by. Or as a watch in the night. Watch in the night. Do you know the watch of war? which rings the bell every hour, right? You, you perhaps when you, you, you were young, right? You all have this uh, watch of a wall. And it's, it's on the wall, and it has a, uh, what, what do you say? Pen, pendulum, right? Pendulum, the weight. And it makes sounds of a tick-tock, tick-tock every second, isn't it? I remember I had a one, the house that I live had a one. So when I was young, so I, I, hear, I heard this sound tick tock, tick tock every second. And this uh, clock of war, watch of war, rings the bell every hour, right? And every half an hour as well. So when it becomes one o'clock, what happened? It rings the bell once, right? isn't it? Dang, right? And when it becomes two, two o'clock, it rings the bell twice. Dang, dang, it means two o'clock, isn't it? What if, what, what, what if it becomes two, two and, uh, two thirty p.m., two thirty? Yes, one once only, isn't it? So every half an hour it rings the bell once, so it notifies the people around it that it becomes, it, the half an hour is passed by, or the, it becomes a clock. Then, how long does it, does, does, does the ring bell, I mean, do, how long does it ring the bell? How long? 
If it's a one, one o'clock, how long it does, does it take to ring the bell once? Maybe a second, isn't it? Maybe a second or maybe two seconds. Or I think the longest, uh, longest ring should be a, uh, on 12 o'clock, either noon or midnight, right? And even, even though the, the watch rings the bell 12 times, it doesn't take a minute or it does take less than a minute to finish ring 12 times. And that is the close explanation about what it means a watch in the night. Watch in the night. Watch in the night is the when it becomes a clock, that second, that, that short moment, that is a watch in the night. Like the, 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 the watch of the world rings the bell, dang. That is the moment of the, that is the watch, that is the moment of watch in the night. And God says a thousand years are not like a day anymore, right? A thousand years like a watch, that second, that moment of the, moment of that clock. A thousand years are like really long time for human being, but for God, it is only like a minute or a very short moment. Therefore, God is same yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible says. If a thousand years are like a second or a, a minute for God, then well, God is same yesterday and today and forever. God doesn't have yesterday. God doesn't have tomorrow. God is always today, and God is eternally today. Isn't it? Maybe on, on our world, for God hasn't, hasn't, hasn't passed by yet. Isn't it? If a thousand years a second, then you can calculate, maybe on our world, hasn't, hasn't passed by yet. So for God, there is no yesterday, there is no tomorrow. For God, God is always Today and God is eternally today. That's what it teaches us. When the Bible says a, a thousand years are like a day, and a, a day is like a thousand years, it teaches us that God is eternal. God is the owner of a time. Psalm 90, verse 2. Psalm 90, verse 2. I'll read it for you. Before the mountains were born, or thou didst give birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. What it means is God was there. God is there. God is God from everlasting to everlasting. From eternity to eternity. God is God and God exists. So God is eternal. That's the first thing that the... Uh, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day teaches us. Then let's go a little bit deeper. There are four Greek words describing time in the Bible. There are four Greek words describing or uh, used for time. The first, you may have heard of it before, first is kairos. Kairos, kairos generally is known as God's time, isn't it? God's time. In Hebrew word is et moed, et moed, et moed. Et moed means God's appointed time or God's promised time. God's appointed time or God's promised time. So for example, your friend asks you, are you free now? Shall we go to cinema and watch New film, Captain America, right? Then you may answer, yes, I have a free time until 6 p.m. today. So let's go and kill some time, right? <laughs> we think that we have a free time, but that time belongs to God. So wherever we go, we should pray that uh, pray to God that, Father, I am going to a certain place now. Please let it become the time pleases you. And help us that this time may not be taken or be lost in Satan's darkness. But I'm going in your time. May it not be lost. 
may not be wasted. Because we are living in the time that God created, we should know that we are meeting friends in God's time and we are watching Captain America in God's time as well. I'm not saying you shouldn't meet your friend. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a coffee with your friend. I'm not saying you should go cinema and watch Captain America, right? All I'm saying is we should always aware that we are living in God's time. So we should pray to God that may this time and may these hours to be pleasing to our Father God, whatever we do and wherever we go. Secondly, there is another word, the, another Greek word for time is hora, hora, hora. Uh, let me read Matthew chapter 26, verse 18. Matthew chapter 26, verse 18. And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teachers say, My time is at hand. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So Jesus said, My time is at hand. In this scripture, right? Matthew chapter 26, verse 18 says, My time is at hand. Here, Greek word kairos is used. Kairos. Which means God already set his plan and he set his day that the Jesus has to uh, shed his blood, right? Jesus uh, shed his blood and save uh, his people. That is chrono, uh, kairos. God's idea, God's plan, and God's appointed time. My time is at hand. Yet, when, we come to, when it comes to Matthew chapter 26, verse 45, Matthew chapter 26, verse 45, I'll read it for you. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the sinner. Matthew chapter 26, verse 18, when Jesus said, my time is at hand, it's a little bit, it's still there are about, about a few hours, isn't it? A few hours before it happens. So my time is at hand. But verse 45 is when Jesus was praying at, 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 in the Garden of Gethsemane, isn't it? It's the last, mi last minute, last moment. After this prayer, Jesus is being caught. So Jesus said, on hour, the hour is at hand. The hour, Greek word, is uh, hora. Hora is at hand. Hora has come. Kairos is God's plan, God's big plan, God's predestined plan, God's appointed idea. God already appointed and set the plan that Jesus is going to save his people, right? And Jesus, but then right before, right before Jesus was being caught, Jesus said, Hora has come, Hora. Hora is the time, Hora is the appropriate time to do things. Hora is the appropriate time to do things. So Kairos, God's plan, God's appointed time is already set. Then when it comes to the right moment to execute it, Jesus said, Hora has come. The right moment to execute God's plan is Hora. So let me explain, let, let me explain to you uh, another way. God already said, He is going to meet you and bless you in today's service at 10.30, uh, sorry, 10.40 a.m., right? That's God's kairos. God already set the time, isn't it? At 10.40 a.m., I will meet my people in the Lord's Covenant Church, and I will bless them. And you woke up early in the morning and departed to your house about 8 a, 9 a.m., or even earlier, right? And you are here at 10.40 a.m. today, and you met God, and you are blessed by God. 
God set the time, God's kairos was there, but when you come and when you, when you, when you, uh, what? When you give, when you provide a hora, that God's kairos become fulfilled. Can you understand? What if you don't come here today? What if you decide to go go to uh, trip to somewhere? You 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 wanna you wanna go to walk around the park? So you missed 10:40 a.m. You missed the Lord's Day service and you missed the 10:40 uh, a.m. Even though God's kairos was there, is there, but because our hora is not there, so God's kairos cannot be fulfilled and cannot be achieved. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? God's kairos was there in Jesus' time as well. So Jesus said, God's kairos is there. My time is at hand. But when, when really close to it, when it's about to happen, he said, Hora has come. This is the time to execute God's plan. So I believe today God already set his kairos that she is going to meet with you and she is going to bless you. Amen? Did you, did you become Hora? Or do you want to become Hora today? Amen? Amen. Let's become Hora. Let's keep our Hora and give it to God so that God's kairos can be fulfilled and achieved. So that God can freely and, 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 uh, Freely meet with you and uh, give you overflowing blessing upon you today. Amen? Amen. Third Greek word for time is chronos. Chronos. You know the chronos, right? Chronos is known as a natural time or human time. Natural time or human time is the 24 hours a day. And the fourth Greek word for time is hemera, hemera. Hemera. Hemera means day or time. Hemera means day or time. So the heavy sin in the eyes of God is to regard what belongs to God as what belongs to us. Heavy sin in the eyes of God is regard what belongs to God as what belongs to us. For example, when we say, it is my time, you know, please leave me alone. I don't, I, you know, don't, do not care. I just want to do what I, what I want to do in my time. It's my money. I want to do what I want to do with my money. It's my body. I want to do what I want to do with my body. Right? But, Time is not ours, isn't it? Time is God's. Money is also not ours. Money is given by God, isn't it? The body is not also ours. Senior pastor always said, if body is yours, the flesh is yours, then you should be able to order or control your body. Do not seek. If you say to your body, do not seek from today onward, then your body should obey you, right? But your body doesn't obey you, right? Do not sin from today onward. Your body doesn't obey you. Why? Because body doesn't belong to you. Body belongs to God as well. So, if we regard what belongs to God as what belongs to us, that is the heavy sin. If we say, this is my time, you know, leave me alone that I, I want to do whatever I want to do with this time. And this is my money. I want to do, you know, whatever we, I want to do with, this, with my money. Please know that this is sin against God. This is sin against God. So bottom line for the big number one is we are not the owner of the time, but God is. We are not the owner of the time, but God is. Therefore, we don't set up the plan of how to use our time, but we should follow and try to live according to God's time and according to God's plan and try to make our time hora so that kairos can be happening in our life. So I pray in the name of the Lord uh, Christ today that may all of you uh, become hora for God, so that God's plan, God's appointed time 
uh, may be fulfilled and achieved in your time and in your life. Amen. Thing number two, what we can learn from uh, a, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. What we can learn from it. Secondly, God's desire is to save all mankind. God's desire is to save all mankind. Let me read verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. The reason why God waited for a thousand years is so that all mankind come to repentance and be saved. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? The previous verse says about the one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And the next verse says, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient. He's only being patient. Why? Why he's waiting for a thousand years? Why he's waiting? Why he's being patient? The Bible says because he doesn't want any perish, right? But he wants every, all to come to repentance and be saved. This is amazing proclamation because this teaches us why time exists and why we live. The Bible clearly says that the time doesn't exist without purpose. Time doesn't exist just naturally. Time doesn't exist coincidentally, accidentally. But time exists so that mankind comes to, could come to repent. That is the reason why time exists. Also, it teaches us that reason why we live is not to enjoy our time or is not to enjoy our life, right? But primarily, we live we have time, we are given time, so that we may repent and may not perish. John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Because God so loved for all mankind to be saved, he waited and waited a long time like a thousand years. It's not, that, it's not that the time is eternal or time flows naturally that God cannot do, God couldn't do anything about it. But time flows because God is waiting and God is being patient. God predestined to save mankind. And he sent his only begotten son to pay the ransom. And he renews his people by the Holy Spirit. And say, say to us, my son, my people, I have been waiting for you a thousand years like a day. And my heart couldn't be at rest like a day is a thousand years. God could have finished this world at any time. God could have stopped the time at any time. But He allows us to live and He allows the time to flow so that we have more time, we have more time that we can uh, repent and eventually we may come to eternal life. That is the reason why time exists. And that is the reason why we are given time. It's not to celebrate, oh, I became 40 years old. Oh, I became 12 years old. Oh, I became, this is my birthday. That is not the reason why God allowed us to have time. The reason why God gave us time is so that we can come to repentance and be saved 
and eventually we receive eternal life. We also must know that the time is given to us is not eternal, but it has an end. We also must know that the time that is given to us is not eternal. As I said, the time is not eternal. It will stop when God wants to stop, isn't it? So we must know that it has an end. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. The disciples of Jesus asked Jesus that what, what will, when will come the end? When would it be end? Jesus didn't answer that there is no end. Jesus didn't answer, no, the time is forever. It will flow forever. No, Jesus didn't answer that way. Jesus answered his disciple, the end shall come when this gospel of kingdom is preached in the whole world. So this, this tells us, this teaches us that end is there. End exists. And will come. As I said, the only reason why time flows, time exists, is because God is being patient with us and God is, God is waiting for us to repent and come to eternal life. Having said about the, uh, the end of the world, the Bible says that coming, uh, the coming for the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. So let's think about Noah for a moment. Let's think about Noah for a moment. Who determined the flood? Who determined the judgment of flood? It's God, isn't it? Yeah, God decided to judge the sinful world with a flood. Then, let me ask you another question. Who determined the date of the flood? Who determined the date of the flood? God, isn't it? Is God's kairos, yes? Yet, yet, Let's think a, little bit, think a little bit more about who determined the date of the flood. We all know that Noah built, had built the ark for 70 to 80 years, right? We all know that we had uh, uh, lectures and the Bible study and the sermons about it, right? We all know that Noah built the ark for about 70 to 80 years. Did God say to Noah, hey Noah, from now on, about 70 to 80 years, I will come and judge the world with a flood. Did he say that? No, he didn't say it. God only said, I will judge the world with a flood. So you should have built the ark. Then when Noah finished constructing the ark, God appeared to him once again and said, in seven days, I will judge the world with a flood. God didn't appear to Noah until the moment Noah finished building the ark. Let me read a scripture for you. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 to 14. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 to 14. Then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms, and you shall cover it inside and out with a pitch. So this is the moment that God uh, ordered Noah to build the ark, right? So that's about when Noah was about uh, five, 520 years old to 530 years old, right? Then Genesis 6, verse 22, it says, Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. 
So the Bible says Noah obeyed fully about the word of God. So Noah built. Noah studied building the ark, and Noah completed the ark. Then Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. For after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing that I have made. The Bible says the date of the flood was the 17th day of the second month when Noah was 600 years old. 17th day of the second month when Noah was 600 years old. And the Bible says seven days before, right? Seven days before God appeared to Noah once again. So that means 10th day of the second month, when Noah was 600 years old, God appeared to him again and said, in seven days I will pour out rain and judge the world with a flood. Of course, God set the kairos here, right? The God's kairos is God is going to destroy, God is going to judge the world with a flood. Right? But then hurrah, hurrah is when? Hurrah is when Noah finished building the ark. Tenth day of the second month of when Noah was 600 years old, when he completed the ark, that became hurrah. What if Noah was not able to build the ark? What if Noah was not able to complete the ark? Will God anyway bring a flood and rain on the 17th day of the second month? I don't know, but I don't think so. Why? Because if, if, if the ark is not completed, and if God started giving, uh, pouring out rains and flood, what would happen? Noah's family would die, right? And even Noah himself would die in the, in the flood and in the rain. So when Noah finished, complete the, complete the ark, that became hora that God could uh, fulfill, God could progress with his kairos. Yes, now you complete the ark. Now you can save yourself. Now you can save others as well. So I will bring judgment upon it. Of course, Ultimately and originally, God is the one who set the date, right? Yet, they need Noah's work, Noah's service. Noah had to complete the ark in order for God to judge the world. I don't know about you, but sometimes I ask myself, when is the Lord coming again. When is the day that the Lord coming again? When I will see him again, right? The answer is here in Noah's story. When Noah finished, completely all, Noah and Noah's family and whoever was in the ark was able to see new heaven and new earth. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When we truly become, when we become true temple of the Holy Spirit, when we become, uh, when we become, when we are completed, right? Noah completed the ark. So when we, when we become completed, when we become, uh, uh, what? Uh, when we became, when we, when we become Enable to save ourselves, when we become true temple of God, where God dwells, and when we go out and introduce this uh, salvation to other people, I believe that would be the moment that God will, Jesus will come again, the Lord will come again. Of course, God set up the Kairos already. God will come again, Jesus will come again. Yet, the date is also slightly up to us. It's not that if we are not ready, I mean, it's not that even though we are not ready, God anyway will come and, 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 and kill everyone. But God is waiting. God is being patient for us to become the true temple of God, for us to become the true ark, 
so that we can save ourselves and we can, in, we can in, evan, evangelize, we can invite other people come into this ark so that other people can be saved. Jesus said the same thing, right? Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. Isn't it? Jesus didn't say, Oh, don't worry, God already set the date. About, about, about uh, 1,000 years later, 2,000 years later, God will come, God, uh, the, kingdom, the, the end shall come. Jesus didn't say it. Jesus said, if you go out and deliver the word of God to all the corners of the, corners of the earth, then the end shall come. See? Who? No, let's not ask about who. God determined the date, right? But we also need to work there. We need to deliver the word of God to the all the corners of, of course, Malaysia, but all, of all the earth. So when the gospel of God's kingdom is preached to the all earth, then God says the end shall come. The end shall come, what will we see? What will we get? Noah was able to see and live in new heaven and new earth. The world without sin, isn't it? All the sinful creatures were gone already when Noah came out from the ark. So it was a new heaven and new earth. The revelation says at the end, what will come? New Jerusalem will come. New heaven and new earth will come, isn't it? It's the same thing. God's judgment is not a terrifying event. God's judgment for us to believer is the renewing process. It's the moment that we will go into eternal rest, the, the, the eternal blessing. So if we deliver the word of God, if we proclaim the word of God to everyone we encounter, wherever we met, that I believe that the, the end, God, the, the second coming of the Lord, will come and we will be able to see His face once again. Amen? Amen. Conclusion for today, we are Aaron boys and girls of God's time. We are Aaron boys and girls of God's time. If there is an end for sure, I mean, there is an end, right, for sure. And if we are tr interested with the God's time, then we should, uh, we should use it wisely. We should use it wisely. We should make use of it, and we should save it. We should use it for good. Ephesians Chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. See? The God says, make the most of your time. Use wisely. Do not waste it. Do not lose it. Right? Make use of it for God. Like a river, time flows. And if you don't make use of it, then it is wasted and lost. But if you believe, and if you use that time for your country, for your family, and for your church, and to be able to bear good fruits for God, and try to live your life by faith, then you are the person who grabs the time and make use of it. You are the person who becomes horror when God achieves His kairos in you. The Bible says, make use of your time. Do not waste it. Make the most of your time. At the end, God will to ask you how long uh, time did you have? God will not ask you how long time did you have? 
or how many hours, how many days, how many years did you live? God won't ask you that question, but God will ask you out of it, how much of a time did you use for me? Out of it, even though you have lived uh, 90 years or 100 years, 100, 120 years, right? By God's blessing, God will not count 120 years. God will not ask, oh, you live 120 years, that's good. No, God will not say it. God will say, out of 120 years, out of 90 years, out of 70 years, how much did you use? How much did you make use of it for good, to bear good fruit? My beloved congregation, 2016 Redemptive History Seminar in Ipo is coming and is, is set in God's Kairos. 21st May is God's Kairos. God already set for the time for the Redemptive History Seminar. But it doesn't just happen automatically or naturally. It requires many hands to serve there. It requires many people to work there. Therefore, we have to give our time and make our time hora so that May uh, God's kairos may be achieved and fulfilled in our time. We have to be there and be able, willing to give our time for God to bear good fruits. Then God's kairos, the redemptive history seminar, the many people being evangelized, many people being saved, many people being, uh, being introduced to the word of God will be achieved and will be fulfilled because Hora is there. Hora is Without horror, it may not be happening. It may not be happening. So, please make your time and come to Ipo and serve. Do, uh, to, uh, do serve God in Ipo. And if you cannot come, go there, then and, and, and let's use your time to support in prayer as well, pray. Today, we are going to begin, commence, the relay fasting prayer for Redemptive History Seminar. About a month ago, we announced that uh, we will start praying for the Redemptive History Seminar about a month, but in 20 days before, we will start the relay fasting prayer. And today happened to be the first May and the, our seminar is 21st May. So we should actually start from this breakfast. But then the, uh, I forgot about it. I was remember, I was reminded this morning. So let's start from tomorrow. Let, let's do relay fasting prayer. Relay fasting prayer is not, is, is the, you fast not for a whole day because it's a bit difficult, right, for some, some people. So it's, it's like a meal fasting. It's, but it's a relaying thing. So if someone uh, fasts in the breakfast, and then, then I fast in the lunch, and someone else fasting, fasting in the dinner time. So the, the whole church is fa uh, uh, the 20 days fast, do the 20 days fasting, but uh, using different people in different time. So the, uh, the rota is prepared already, and it's in outside on the whiteboard. So you may uh, take it and put your name and uh, if there is already someone praying in lunchtime, but you are really desired to pray in lunchtime, don't worry. You just put your name there. Uh, two people can pray as well. So don't worry. And you just uh, fill up the form that when, when you want to uh, use your time to support uh, God's work and so that uh, really... We can, we, can, we can use our time as Hora. We can become Hora for God, so that God's kairos, God's great plan, God's pre predestined plan, God's will and God's time may be fulfilled and may be achieved through, uh, in, uh, through Redemptive History Seminar in Ipo. Amen? God's plan, we, may, we, we, we cannot fathom. We don't know what God planned for this year, isn't it? 
I mean, you may say, oh, I've been to Ippo before, and probably this is what will happen this year as well. Who knows, isn't it? God may prepare greater thing this year. God may prepare, you know, amazing and miraculous thing this year. But if we don't become Hora, we will not be able to see God's miracle there. So we have to become Hora. We have to use our time for God. So please uh, fill up the form to pray in the fasting for the fasting prayer. And also, please uh, come to Ippo and serve. Uh, make your time Hora so that God's plan may be really fulfilled in Ippo Seminar and your time. So when our time becomes Hora, God's time Kairos will be fulfilled. And many will be invited, and many will be led to salvation. Also, not only that, in your life, in your life, the God's Kairos, the God waited for a thousand years, isn't it? God said, God, he, he's, he's been patient for a thousand years. The God's Kairos that he waited for a thousand years may be fulfilled and may be achieved accomplished in your life. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.